Okay, so uh, our plan today, uh, after building up uh, some uh, introduction to the real numbers, is to begin to count sets of real numbers. Uh, and in order to do that, we have to lay a groundwork for uh, the idea of counting. So that's our plan for today. We want to talk about uh, how to count. And uh, as you saw in the, uh, the Sesame Street video, um, uh, why is it that we bother to count, and how is it that we count? So here's a question. If I wanted to, for instance, count a bunch of fish, um, well, if I weren't uh, going to use a number to describe uh, how many fish I had, I might do like, um, like the, uh, the figure in Sesame Street. Fish, 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 fish. Okay. But there's a problem with that, and that is it, it, it actually is kind of hard if you have, you know, 52 fish to count to actually list them all out, right? So we have a way of uh, doing what? What is, it, what is it we're doing when we count? What, are, what is it we're doing? So, for instance, if I count the number of people in the first row, I'm saying, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Fish, 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 <laughs> fish, right? Or if I'm, a, if I'm a, a little baby just learning how to count and I want to count the number of toes I have, I might, um, I might uh, you know, be in my crib, something like this, and I'd go one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Okay, what am I doing when I, when I count? What is it that I'm doing? Yes? You're assigning a number to each object. I'm assigning a number to each object, yeah. And one, in fact, what kind of number? Is it a, a number like pi? Oh, a natural number. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes? Okay. Now, if, I, if you asked me to count the number of people in the first row and I counted like this, one, two, three, and stopped, would you be happy with the way I counted? No. Why not? Because you, you weren't somehow included, right? Okay. What if I counted like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, <laughs> Paul is happy. He got <laughs> counted twice, but but you're not happy with that as a as a method of counting either, are you? Right? Yeah. So we're mapping the, the the items, the people in the first row, onto the natural numbers, right? And and that's in fact described formally by a function. function. Excellent. So um, the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about or a ask people to r remind themselves about functions, okay? So often we denote a function uh, like this, f uh, colon a arrow b, and this is to signify that a is getting mapped onto b. So you have a picture that, oh, might look something like this. Here's a, and here's b, and here's a function, f, that we, we like to say maps one thing onto another thing, okay? Or into another thing, not necessarily hitting everything. Uh, it, 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 we say uh, maps, that's one way to say it. Another way to say it is it associates to each little x an element f of little x in b, if x is in a. So, here you might have a point x, and here is the point f of x. And it is a function if for every, any time you put in the number x, you get a unique thing out, right? It, you, it's not like you could put in x many different times and get different things depending on what time you put uh, x into this function, okay? So there's a unique output for each input, okay? But it is possible, for instance, that there, are, there might be several points that get mapped to the same point, right? It's possible that maybe x, but also uh, 
uh, y gets mapped into this one point, okay? So it's, uh, this has the property that two points might get mapped to one point, okay? And so there's at least a, a place here where it's two to one in some sense, okay? Okay, so um, very good. What else? Uh, maybe I should remind you what we call A. A is called the something of the function, the domain of the function. Yes? Ring a bell? And B is called the? No, it's not the range. Thank you. It's the codomain. The distinction is the range is only the things that actually get hit. Okay? So uh, we should probably mention a few other terms here. Um, uh, we should say that, um, uh, let, let's define uh, what we mean by F. Okay, so if, let's say you have a set C in A, and you have a set D in B, so C uh, might be some set over here. So, you know, maybe C is like some funny set here, right? Maybe C is like this. Okay, just, it could be disconnected set, no necessary reason it has to be connected. Um, then we'll define f of big C to be basically the, the image of C under this mapping. So we would say all uh, let f of little x, where x is in what? C. Okay. So this has a name, it's called the image of C. And where does it live? Lives in B, uh, B, uh, lives in B right? So the image of C, this, this, these two blobs might get mapped onto the same blob, right? So if this is C, then this would be F of C. Happy? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, and then we can also define a corresponding notion, a corresponding notion of uh, if you're starting with a set here, there's sort of a way to go backwards. So, you know, maybe um, let's say I start with a set over here. And it gets, uh, what's the corresponding notion? So maybe I'll call this set uh, D. What's the corresponding notion? Uh, if I want to somehow bring it back over here and look at the points, some special points over here related to the points there. Well, um, not surprisingly, you might look at, uh, call this thing the inverse image. So this is the image of C, and this is the inverse image of D, which is in B. And uh, it might define it to be, here's the notation, F you write a little minus one to indicate you're going backwards. It's the inverse, if you, in some sense, okay? And it's the set of all points over here that get mapped into D. Are you with me? So I might write that as the set of all little x such that f of little x is in D. Happy? Comma? The inverse image of D. And so that over here might look like this, right? Okay. Happy? Okay, now again, what I want to point out is if you have some points here, maybe a single point in D, it might have multiple free images, right? Multiple points, right? Okay. So many things can get sent to one thing. That is why the inverse image is not necessarily a function, right? Because you take one point here, there's no way to say what unique point it, it's associated in the opposite direction. Yes? OK. But there is a situation in which we can talk about an inverse function. So let's, um, let's make some no notation then, some definitions. So we're going to, um, in, in a, there's a very special situation where suppose the 